So welcome back to the channel. This time around I'm developing two rolls of film simultaneously, both Ilford, one's Pan F and the other one is Auto. I've never used Auto before. Auto is only sensitive to blue and green light. Uh, so you could, in theory, develop it under red light. I'm just treating it like a normal film. So this video is for beginners and for advance, it's for anybody really who wants to develop their own film because you can see the problems they're gonna get into and you can see my workflow. Um, yeah, and then you will also see the scans at the end. Now the idea why I shoot film is basically to collect material to do prints such as lit process or maybe cyanotype or just traditional black uh, darkroom prints. Um, that's why I do photography is to just collect some materials and make something at the end. That's how my process is. Um, yeah, let me know down in the comments what your process is and what kind of processes you're into because I'll cover them on the channel at some point. I think I'm going to do some Van Dyke Brown some soon because I haven't done that for quite some time. But this is kind of a part one of a video because there will be part two where I'll take these negatives and make some lits from it. So yeah, let's get started. Welcome back to the channel. This time around we're doing two rolls of film, Ilford and Auto, and I'm developing them simultaneously and I'm going through my workflow and I hope it will help you whether you're a beginner or advanced. I'm not so uh, uptight about developing film um, and you will see that I got myself in a little bit of trouble and I just show you how I actually sorted that out and fix it. Excuse the pun. Um, so enjoy and uh, there's chapter markings if you want to skip to certain bits. So I have my Ilford Pan F in here uh, and here I have my Orto and that's my 1 to 25 dilution ready for this one and 1 to 100 you can notice the colors are a bit low on the 1 to 100 and, the, and it's much darker on the 1 to 25. Um, so this one will need 7 minutes, this guy will need 11 minutes, temperature yeah, it's, what is the temperature? A little over 20. Not gonna worry about that too much. What's more important is that your temperature is around 20 degrees and not really under because the chemicals don't work so well. I mean, rotenol will work at pretty much anything, but uh, it becomes easier when it's a little warmer, especially over 20 degrees. So, and I would think this both of these films are pretty much expired by this stage, so so I'll give it a little bit more temperature, won't do it any harm. Uh, let's see what it was at. It's going up there. That's okay. 24 degrees, 25 maybe. Let it settle there. Okay. So, but it'll lose a degree or so anyway, once it goes into the containers, because the containers aren't so warm. But temperature wise, black and white photography, um, really should aim for 20 degrees. Um, on some developers like Spore N, let me get the Spore N up here. This guy, uh, often that is 25, 26 degrees, it's higher. Uh, and I've often found changing your temperature with Rotenol actually gives you, better results as well so it's something to note you should always note your temperature and if you like a certain result you know why not keep it that way so I'm going to develop these I'm going to get my timer out and develop them and let's see how we go so I've got boat timers running uh, this guy's coming up for an inversion every minute so this guy also I'm a little over on that one um, Sometimes you need to bang your 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 development uh, tanks somewhere through the middle. I just banged it there at the beginning just to get any bubbles that might be on the film. And your jugs and all this kind of stuff, once you're finished with them, you need to wash them thoroughly uh, so you have no contamination. Uh, if you use a different developer, that's really important. Uh, so I'm going to do this every half, half, a, half a minute. Uh, 
and this guy needs a few more seconds. So I'm doing developing two um, things, two films at the same time, which is fine. This one has to go to six and a half minutes. Uh, let's do that. Okay. Now let's do that, another one on that one. So you get the idea. So I'll develop these guys out. And once they're developed out, I have to go and wash them and fix them and then hang them. So this one is finished developing. So I'm just, just giving it a little bit of a wash. This one has a four and a half minutes to go on it. Just my timer over here. Just give that a little bit of a inversion. So pour that out. So I've got my fixer. So I mark my fixer, and this one has actually four films being used on it, so I need to do that in here for about four minutes. Uh, do another inversion over here. It's kind of busy when you're trying to do two films at the same time while, while actually filming as well. So let me put down the camera and do the fixer on the other one. So the fixer is in here. I use a funnel and I have a funnel dedicated for fixer. So never mix that up with developer or water or whatever. That's always for fixer, that funnel. So when this is finished, uh, which will be about a minute in here, we do a couple of inversions on that guy as well for the fixer. And uh, We're gonna have to do another inversion on this guy as well. And then we, once this is done, uh, pour the fixer back in here and then I'll fix this guy out and then I'll wash both films, uh, bring them a bit closer together. I'll wash both films and then um, we'll see what kind of results we get. So I'm washing the Pan F now. Uh, the fixer needs another minute and then I'll pour it back in. If you're doing Delta, Ilford Delta, fix much longer, about eight minutes. That's what I've, but normally most films are around four minutes. And uh, you need to just put that timer away. I don't want to get it wet. Oop. Give that a good go. And let's see. Yeah, another 30 seconds on that. I mean, fixer, you can do four minutes, eight minutes. So, that's ready for its fixer now. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, put that out of the way. So that's done four minute fix here. We'll just pour that back in the bottle here. And a fixer like this that I've usually you get ten rolls of film out of it. So let's just pour that guy in here. I pour it back into the bottle so I know exactly how much is going into into the container here. This is a 500 milliliter bottle and there's just one roll of medium format in here so that should cover it. Uh, so turn off that water. No water is off. Okay so clear my timer here. These are cheap timer that you get for a couple of euros. So I'll put that here, give it a couple of inversions. Bang it on, the, on, your, on your table. I'm using my darkroom sink here. I have a video on how to make this darkroom sink. It served me quite well. Uh, it takes a lot of abuse, especially doing lit process, our Van Dyke Brown, our salt paper prints, our cyanotype stuff. Yeah, you can, it doesn't matter. Yeah, there's loads of little brown marks and crap everywhere, but that's what a darkroom sink is about. Sure, yeah, I could get a stainless steel one and pay a fortune and take a mortgage out in my house, but no, I, I decided to build this sink. Uh, let me just have a, show you that sink, how it looks. See, there's my sink. <laughs> so... So this guy we could, this guy is already fixed, so we can just do a wash on this guy. This guy will need a good wash for 
um, a good couple of minutes um, a good 10 minutes washing yeah that looks like it's doing all right so put that guy in here and add some water in okay so let let that run for quite some time uh, and then the fixer will go back into the bottle it's kind of a whole work uh, kind of workflow that you have to kind of make that suits you and uh, it is kind of a messy process so I don't care because it's in the darkroom sink and but I used to do this in the kitchen sink and yeah you'd have to have a towel somewhere and uh, it's kind of you really need a dedicated place for it so that's coming up to one minute on that guy we can already pop that guy out and just have a look the little jobo tanks are really easy to open but the, the spools on them I don't like too much because they're hard to, they're hard to load so uh, it looks like it's okay yeah but I would give it a good, give it a good wash and that's on 30 seconds but washing your film at the end is really really important and if you see anything like on the film if you see the edges are a little bit purple or damaged or that means it's not fixed correctly so what you can do there in that case is just fix it just just put it in the fix again you'll and it'll clear it up quite nice I, I got that with Delta that's why I said that Delta you need to Oh, fix it at least eight minutes so that one's already done so let's get rid of that timer that one the other the other one can the other um so developing two rows of film while filming it yeah fun huh so let's put the fixer in here I've already marked the bottle that I've used it for two rolls of film So that will need to be washed, like everything else. And somewhere there's a top for that bottle. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. I'll look for it later. Now I'll do the same for that. Wash it out. Then put the wetting agent. This is an old wetting agent. Basically, I think this is washing up liquid, basically, or something like that. Um, it's something special. You just need a drop of this stuff in, the, in in each of them. I think this actually comes from my father-in-law. He used to also have a dark room, so an old agfa one so yeah yeah why not it's it's not going to make any difference really i know some people will cry out fresh chemicals fresh chemicals certainly for developer and certainly for fixer fresh in that case but a wedding agent who could yeah it's only a minor thing anyway okay looking at this film you can see here i've got a little bit of white spot here that means the fixer wasn't finish quite right on it uh, probably not enough in the tank but the net it's developed all right looks pretty okay so what I'll do is I'll put it in a tray and I'll fix it in a tray I have it in a fixer tray now I mean normally you wouldn't do this uh, but I, I kind of just want to show you know if you get problems with your fixer it's not the end of the world uh, you can also see that these negatives are definitely from the Bronica because uh, it's six by four and a half. Um, I think these were some macros I did. Oh yeah, I definitely think so. Yeah, and it's already starting to clear up. There's just the white spots on it, and I'd like it to to be fixed correctly. So, because that can cause that can cause problems down the road. So. I just gently rock that back and forth. Yeah, you can see that the spots are going away now. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was just wasn't enough fixer in it. That's a 500 milliliter uh, bottle and the tank is really 600 milliliters. And so I was kind of chancing it. But these are the kind of things that you 
if you run into trouble in the dark, in you know, while developing film, there is, it's not the end of the world. There is things you can do. You don't need to be uptight about things. Right. Look at that. There is definitely results there. So, and there's definitely, there's definitely good negatives in that. So I'll need to wash that next as well. So I'll use a different tray to do that. So I have the film emulsion side up. So I don't really want to scratch in the bottom of the tray. I will take out this water, do it a couple of times, and those, and then I'll do my wetting agent on this. But, you know, it looks, they're all cleared up. All the spots have gone. Um, that, that's fine. My other film here is just, I need to look after that as well. So I got myself in a bit of trouble, but definitely salvaged, salvaged it pretty well. That's how it goes. But they look okay. So the negatives are looking like they came out quite nice on the auto. Uh, this is a film that you can actually develop under red light. Yeah, there's definitely negatives in there. So I'll let that hang to dry. Uh, in my dark room. Little shelf above my sink here. Uh, and I just have a little towel here for all the little bits so they don't fall through the metal shelf. And that's how I dry all my film stuff. Anything to do with like film development uh, and glass rods and I want them to, to dry. I put them here above my, my sink. So let's go back to have a look at these guys. And they look okay. We're gonna have to hang those separately. Uh, already in the wetting agent. Yeah. I ended up hanging those film. It's a bit tricky, but I ended up hanging them over the darkroom sink with these mini pegs on top and bottom. Um, it's not ideal, but I didn't really know any other way to do it. I was going to put it on the back of a tray, but negatives look all right. Yeah. Now I remember doing these. <laughs> I couldn't remember how, because I knew these, these films were st stuck in my dark room for quite some time. And uh, I was, didn't know what they were. So uh, I said I better go and develop them. So to scan my negatives, I use what's called silver Silverfast is a German software. Um, it's okay. <laughs> Let me put it that way. It does the job. It's a bit clunky. It's a bit slow. It doesn't have all the presets you'd want for a film. I know there's a new version. Uh, I wouldn't bother myself upgrading it. Uh, I could use an SLR scanner. As you can see, I do have Pan F here for my Ilford. I have the the um, ASA in here. I've changed my midtones and contrast uh, for the scanning, and I've actually increased my e exposure. Yeah, um, the, really the purpose of when I shot this film here, I'm gonna actually just run the batch scan here. It'll be quite noisy in the background, and it starts off, you can hear it, and it takes quite some time, and it's quite slow. But the purpose of me uh, making these negatives which are macros that I made in the garden is to actually use them for either uh, for a lit process for kind of an art project the on the other hand the Ortos film was basically from a little Olympus camera which is kind of a point-and-shoot uh, which I'm absolutely happy with the results what's important is when you're scanning you want to scan somewhere around here 80 megabytes for a medium format film uh, again, I'm not really into scanning film. I'm into using film in the darkroom. So let's get on with this video and I'll show you my scans. And uh, yeah, feel free to comment down below, of, of course. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and hit that thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. Helps this little channel do better um, and make more videos. So these are the raw scans without any touch-up. Definitely have two for a lit process and two for a traditional black and white print for the next part in part two. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope to see you on the next one.
If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little notification bell and hope to see you on the next video. Goodbye.